Whoa, whoa, okay, all right. So I'm back and talking more Game of Thrones, and today I'm doing a little profile on the man they call Jon Snow. And, you know, there's not a lot of kind of redeeming characters in the cast, but Jon Snow is definitely one of them. I mean, Jon Snow is actually a good guy. And the backstory with Jon Snow is that he is the son of Lyanna Stark, and Rhaegar Targaryen, right, which puts him in a very unique position of having some power from both families, right, and ultimately really being the guy who probably should sit on the throne, right, because I believe all the secession in the Seven Kingdoms goes to the male, so he would have been the son of the next direct heir to the Mad King. Anyway, nobody knows this except for Ned Stark, probably a couple other people, because they have to keep this secret. So Ned goes out there, of course, Lyanna Stark is his sister, so this is his nephew, brings him back to Winterfell and raises him as his own son, but of course, he has the title of Bastard, which is, you know, it's it, this is why your name's Snow, because it's like a billion Snows out there, right? They should all click up and start their own house, but they never get to that. And this is where I really start to develop that hatred for Caitlyn Stark, right? Because she treats him like crap. Now, you can see in this picture of the Starks here, I had to review this to see if he was even included. This is when the Starks are receiving uh, uh, the Baratheons, when the Baratheons come to Winterfell. And he's actually there. You might be able to see him, like, in the back there in the second row. And I'm surprised because by the time they have dinner, Caitlyn Stark's like, he shouldn't be here because he's a bastard and all that nonsense. And he has an interesting scene with Tyrion Lannister where he explains to him to accept what he is and wear it like a badge of honor. But, so that that's kind of how we start to develop Jon Snow. He has a great relationship with all the other kids, particularly Rob. He and Rob are, are really homies, and the younger Stark boys as well, and Arya. And he learns how he learns like a lot of humility. So he's treated as a bastard, you know, most of his life. So like you're around lords and the money and all that, but you're not really one of them. You get the benefit of all the training and the experience, but you don't ever elevate yourself above those people. Then he gets sent off to Castle Black, right? He joins the Night's Watch, which is a good move for a bastard who's never going to inherit any lands. And there he's in a kind of a different position. Now you're like, you know, the, the Lord Commander or the trainer basically says he's been living in these towers looking down on the rest of common people like you. And so he's kind of get that position flipped on him where you're not treated as a low bastard. You're treated as a guy who thinks he's better than everybody. Um, and But he shows himself as a natural leader, really cares about uh, his brothers and his commitment to the Night's Watch and befriend Sam there, who, of course, is getting picked on by any and everybody there. Then, of course, he goes out and he falls in love with Egret of the Wildlings, spends some time with them, and they look at him as, you think you're better than us. And Egret, who I didn't care much for, really kind of breaks things down in, in terms of the relationship between the Wildlings and, I guess, the more civilized people of uh, who are north of the Wall. So Jon Snow kind of gets it in all these different directions. He really is one of the few characters that almost can relate with almost everyone in the story. He relates to the lords, relates to the common people, relates to the wildlings, even deals with them and their, and their giants and things like that. And as it turns out, I'm sure it will progress where he becomes at least the king of the north. If not, you know, he has a legitimate uh, claim to the Iron Throne, better than anyone else's, including Daenerys' claim. So, you know, he's one of the characters you like the most. In fact, they liked him so much that he's one of the few guys that gets to come back from the dead. I remember when Jon Snow died, and I was like, what the hell? You killing Jon Snow? He's like one of my favorite characters. But they do bring Jon Snow, and that just kind of shows that he's special in the story. There's an asterisk by him. Um, maybe because he's got King's Blood. I don't know what the heck it is. But he's got real, real character, and it really shows. And he takes a real progression. You know, you see him develop himself as his leader and this warrior he's a stand-up guy he never wavers he understands you know both sides of the conflict between the wildlings and the and the and the and the seven the seven kingdoms that are civilized and he also knows what's going on with the uh with the uh the, the ice walkers so he's one of the more well-rounded characters in the series it really shows in everything that he does and you'll enjoy watching more about Jon Snow and his progression as a character and he's one of the guys I'm actually rooting for so that's a little bit on Jon Snow I'll be back with some more I'm going to talk some more characters in Game of Thrones but thank you for stopping in and please leave your comments and give us a like and a share we definitely appreciate it